General Motors have just revealed brand new batteries they've been working on. Very interesting, higher energy density. They have a certain kind of chemistry that has enabled them to, well, General Motors say they're going to use these in pickup trucks, particularly SUVs, you know, large vehicles that need extra range, that need higher energy density batteries. This is what we know about them so far. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. GM's so-called secret batteries will slash EV costs, people are saying. Apparently, these LMR batteries will power trucks that deliver more than 400 miles of range, and like I'm talking, you know, big vehicles. So it will enable General Motors to put smaller battery packs in bigger vehicles and still get a lot of range. General Motors and LG Energy, or LG Chem as they were formerly called, have announced plans to use lithium manganese rich LMR prismatic battery cells. So not cylindrical like Tesla, but prismatic cells in electric trucks and full-size SUVs. GM will, will apparently be the first to use LMR batteries. Production will begin in two years time, or two and a half years time, at the beginning of 2028. So what do we know about these LMR batteries? Well, GM is saying that these are a breakthrough and apparently they can be, um, they are simply traditional batteries that require nickel manganese and... Now, apparently these batteries do not require nickel or cobalt. So that will make them more affordable, much more affordable. That's what General Motors are saying anyway. Here's what um, experts have said. High proportion of more affordable manganese versus nickel and cobalt which is a big benefit. They promise to deliver a greater capacity and energy density. Now, I should point out, there is one problem with these batteries, and I'll get to what that is in just a second. MG and General Motors haven't gone into details, but they've said that their new LMR, uh, their batteries, prismatic battery cell, has a 33% higher energy density than the best performing lithium iron phosphate batteries, despite having a comparable cost. So, is that actually true? Honestly, if if General Motors can manufacture in the United States uh, LMR batteries for a similar cost to lithium ion phosphate with 33% higher energy density, if that is true, General Motors stock should be worth double what it's worth today. Now, I, here's the problem. They're not GM's batteries. They're clearly uh, like a collaboration between General Motors and LG Chem. If they were just GM's, then this should make GM's should make GM's, this should make GM's stock price literally skyrocket. But I think that there's a bit more to it. And I think there is one problem that General Motors aren't mentioning, but I'll get to that in a second. Now, what does this mean? Well, we can expect pickup trucks with more than 400 miles of range. That's 600 and about 650 kilometers, as well as massive battery pack cost savings compared to today's high nickel batteries. That would be a huge development because, I mean, let's be honest, the Chevy Silverado EV LT, right, the extended range, that's actually a pretty good truck. It's got 408 miles of range. That's 657 kilometers. I, have, I, I think people would love that. But can they afford it? Well, probably not. They start at 75000 US dollars. So, yeah, they're expensive. Now, if General Motors could make these batteries at a the cost of lithium-ion phosphate, right, with the energy density of NCM batteries or NMC batteries, then that would be a game changer. There's no doubt about it because a 33% cost reduction, or probably, really, you're probably estimating it probably close to a 30 to 40% reduction in the cost of the battery pack manufacturing. General Motors could probably bring the price down to 65,000 US dollars potentially, which would be comparable to a similar internal combustion engine truck with that kind of, you know, that kind of range. GM's Director of Advanced Battery Cell Engineering said the batteries are the result of a decade of development. Kushal, um, can't say surname, went on to say GM's current crop of electric trucks and SUVs use NMCA batteries, so nickel, manganese, cobalt, aluminium batteries. These have a composition that is roughly 85% nickel, 10% manganese, and 5% cobalt. Now, I should point out they also do use lithium. LMR batteries are vastly different. They are 65% manganese, 35% nickel, and use no cobalt. So that's a huge difference, right? The reduction in the use of nickel, massive reduction going from 85% to 35% using zero cobalt, which is the most expensive component of the battery, 
and then using predominantly manganese, which is much cheaper than nickel, means, well, these batteries will be much cheaper to manufacture. But there are some problems, and those are this. No one that we know of yet has gotten LMR batteries, so lithium manganese rich batteries yet to last for a long time. People have been, Tesla has been working on this technology for I believe it, about 10 years as well. Many companies are working on this. Now, basically General Motors is certainly not the only one. There is at least six other companies working on manganese rich lithium batteries and they keep coming up against the same problem over and over and over and that is longevity. The same problem faced by solid state batteries that when you use them, they face issues of de battery degradation. And it happens much faster than in lithium ion phosphate batteries and also much faster than in NMC batteries. So nickel, manganese, cobalt based lithium batteries. Have General Motors solved that problem yet? Have LG Chem solved that problem yet? My, I would suspect that the answer is no. I believe there's a little bit of um, Elon Musk kind of like excitement going on here. You know, he gets over excited and promises something. If they really had solved it today, if in 2025 they'd solved the problem, they would not be making them in 2028. They wouldn't be waiting two and a half years, maybe three years to start making them, right? Uh, really, why would you do that, right? You'd build them next year or, or this year. You'd get, you'd get started straight away. So I don't think General Motors or LG Chem have solved this problem of longevity yet. They're just saying, oh, we think we have. We get, we're on the right track. We think we'll get there by 2028. That's the problem here. That's what I think is the problem, but I could be wrong. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts are. Do you agree? Do you disagree? And guys, as always, thanks for supporting the electric car movement. People are saying that in the United States, the market is waiting for the new Tesla Semi. Now, I know there's some um, pushback against this, but the truth is the Tesla Semi is going to be mass produced next year. And this will be a game changer for the US trucking industry in many ways. However, here in Australia, we also have some pretty epic new Semis coming. In fact, one has just been revealed for sale in Australia right now. Another one's coming very soon, which will help to get rid of some of these absolutely rubbish diesel trucks on the roads, which I think are a safety nightmare. And also these are great for the drivers. Much, much better to drive, much better also for the, the air, for reducing pollution. Hello, my friends, welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans, you're watching The Electric Viking. Back in 2022, Scania, a Swedish commercial vehicle manufacturer, unveiled a new line of electric semi-trucks for regional operations with a 624 kilowatt hour battery. It's coming to Australia after receiving approval for three different versions. And this was first spotted by Roland Zappadow and shared on X, says The Driven. 